Hello and welcome to the free four-day mini course for the four C's. The four C's are you didn't cause it, you can't control it and you can't cure it. However, you do have choices. So we are on day one and day one is you didn't cause it. So I'm Linda Easto and I'm the founder of Hopeless to Happy Coaching and I'm a family recovery coach. I support people who have got an addicted loved one in their lives and I help them to prioritise their own self-care as well as how to support the addict in the right way. So let's get on with the session today and I'm just going to share my screen with you and here we go let's get started so it is the free four-day mini course and it's the four c's we are on day one which is all about you didn't cause it so day two will be about you can't control it three you can't cure it and four, you do have choices. So let's get started with today, you didn't cause it. So why you didn't cause it? I want you to remember this, and I will repeat it. You are not at fault for your addicted loved one's addiction. Yeah, you are not at fault for your addicted loved one's addiction. Now, I know that because I used to think it was my fault that my son went into addiction. And I now know that it had nothing at all to do with me. So I know many people who've got an addicted loved one. They'll think it's their fault. They'll spend loads and loads of sleepless nights going over and over and over what they could have done differently, what they did wrong, looking for any indication to back up and claim that it was their fault when it definitely isn't your fault. You cannot make someone do something they don't want to do. I mean... It could be environmental factors. It could be to do with where they grew up. It could be the people that they hang about with. It could be that there is addiction in the family. Um, but none of these factors cause addiction. None of them. They do. They may have. Yeah, they may have been supporting or enabling the addiction to grow but they definitely are not the cause of addiction. Let's have a look at what does cause it. Well, society doesn't help because drugs and alcohol are just so readily available. And young people, they may experiment. I think most people experiment. Some decide they don't like it. Some just grow out of it. However, there are some that will continue. And the reason they continue is because it numbs out a pain that they're trying to escape from. It's usually a symptom. So, yeah, addiction is a symptom of something else that is going on. It could be anxiety. It could be depression. It could be social awkwardness. Or it could be an obsessive personality trait. It could be a number of things. But we need to remember that addiction is now recognised as an illness. It's an illness of the brain. And even though it can't be cured, it can be managed. The one caveat there is the only time it can be managed is when the addict is ready to start their journey of recovery. Now, I'd like to go through three myths about addiction. Now, these are the three myths that I feel really strongly about. There are lots of myths about addiction, but I'm going to talk to you about the three that really resonate with me and have done all through my journey um, one is overcoming addiction is a simple matter of willpower. I used to think that. I used to say that to my son. Surely you can just stop. If you really wanted to, you could just stop. 
it's not as easy as that. Willpower isn't strong enough because once addiction's got hold of them, it becomes to them a matter of life or death. They do absolutely anything to get their next fix of their substance of choice. Myth number two, addicts have to hit rock bottom before they can get better. Now, this isn't true because some people, well, it depends. It depends on the person. Some things could be absolutely cat catastrophic for some people and for someone else, it will be just waters off a duck's back. It just depends on the person. Now. The majority of addicts have to get to the point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're sick of living the way that they're living. They're sick of having no money. They're sick of having no friends. Um, and yeah, you know, it has to be whatever their rock bottom is. And it is different for every one of them. So some it can be the, a minor thing. Some, it can be absolute desperation states when they've lost everything. So it depends on the person. Number three, treatment didn't work before, so there's no point in trying again. Well, one of the main facts here is, on average, it takes seven times for an addict to actually achieve any sustained recovery. So that's on average. And something else you need to remember is that relapse is part of recovery. So they, um, they might not get it first time round for whatever reason, they might not. But having said that from experience, the first time they go into treatment, it's usually for their family. It's usually for whether it's a husband, a wife, a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother. I know my son, when he went in the first time, and he will openly say this now, that he went in for me and his sister. And that's why he went in, because he was just sick and tired of us nagging him, I think. Um, so, yeah, it has to be... They want to get well and it has to be for themselves. So that brings us nearly to the close of today. Uh, I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom. And the words of wisdom are never, ever lose hope. Every day that an addict wakes up, there is the chance that that may be the day that they reach out for professional help. And we need to never lose hope for ourselves either. Um, we need to reach out for help. There, I know I kept silent for many, many years because I felt really guilty. I felt really shameful. And there was a lot of stigma and judgment. So I kept quiet for many years. And I know there are so many people, there are millions of people out there that are keeping quiet. So... You just need to reach out and you need to get help for yourselves as well. OK, so you can't control it. You cannot control addiction. How many of you have tried to control a situation or a person that's making mistakes? I know I did when my son was first in addiction. I tried to control everything about his life absolutely everything and it wasn't until I found help for myself that and thought about it that I realized yeah I was more aware of it um until you sit back or someone points it out you won't even know you're doing it because you think you're being loving and supportive I know I used to think I can fix it if I try hard enough. I thought I could do this. But the thing is, you can't. It's just not able. We're not able to fix it. We're not strong enough. We're not powerful enough. The illness of addiction just can't be fixed by you or I. It has to be done by professionals when the addict is ready to get well. 
And the truth is addiction thrives off your controlling behaviour. And we think by paying the bill here and there is helping when the question we should be asking is, what have you done with your bill money? And by us continually helping and bailing them out, we're just enabling addiction to continue and to progress and to get worse. So what do we need to do? We need to look at a new way of thinking. What do we need to change our focus to? Well, there's a few reasons for changing our focus from controlling to supporting in the right way. So the first one is you're lowering the addict's um, confidence. You're knocking their confidence and their self-esteem um, without even realising it. If they're a grown adult, they're capable of making phone calls, they're capable of making appointments, et cetera, et cetera. And by us jumping in to rescue them each time, and that's what we're doing, we're rescuing them, we are making them feel incapable of doing everyday normal things that adults do. And while we're running around controlling the addict's life, what are we doing? We're neglecting ours. You cannot serve from an empty cup. And you need to take good care of yourself because the chaos that is caused by addiction is just so energy sapping. And yeah, it's really worrying and makes you feel really anxious. And number three, we're usually thrown into the world of addiction without the tools to help us get through. One of the most important things is to educate yourself about addiction so that you know what you're dealing with. It's like having two people in one body and depending on the day, um, it depends whether they both turn up or one or the other turns up. So you've got your loved one and you have the addict and they are both very different. They'll both have very different personalities. So it's worth sitting back and observing to see which one you are dealing with. And then four. Getting help and support for yourself is crucial. And I mean crucial. There's millions of us out there suffering in silence when if you get the right help and support, you can make such a difference to your own life. But you can also make a huge difference to the addict's life. So my leaving comments here are... Don't do for an addict what they can do for themselves. I'll repeat that. Don't do for an addict what they can do for themselves. So my closing words of wisdom for today are, you are your loved one's best chance of recovery. If you change, you will affect change. So by changing your behaviour and leading by example and showing that self-care is really important. Your addicted loved one will notice these changes and they will start to change themselves. So why can't you cure it? Well, addiction is probably the only illness or disease that tells you you are not ill. And it lives in the part of the brain that controls your automatic responses. So your subconscious actions like blinking and breathing, which are pretty important bodily functions. I'm sure you'll agree, because if we couldn't breathe, we wouldn't be here, would we? Um, and with that in mind, you may now start to understand how strong the illness of addiction is. It totally consumes the addicts every waking moment when the disease has progressed to this part of the brain. And the only way addiction can be treated is by professionals that specialise in this area. And even then, it can only be treated when the addict wants to get well, when they've had enough of the life that they've been leading. The addicts need special therapy and long-term support to help them stay in, in their recovery. And this is why we can't cure it. We are just too close and too emotionally involved. And the important thing here is that boundaries are really important. They're really important for the loved ones of the addicts. So let's have a look at why they're so important. Well. 
we need boundaries to protect ourselves and also to stop enabling the addiction. And the hardest thing you're going to learn to do is dealing with an addict and saying no and meaning it and not budging from that decision. Now, the reason I say that is because if you say no and then you eventually back down because they're nagging you, the next time the addict asks for the same thing, they will think, oh, they're going to back down anyway. So they'll just keep going on. And it gives mixed messages. I did it for years, not realising what I was doing. Um, And, yeah, you don't feel good yourself when you're setting a boundary and then you're breaking it. It's like you're relapsing. So, yeah, just not good. It gives mixed messages to them. There are all sorts of boundaries that can be implemented. And probably the first one is to stop giving them money, buy them a meal cook them a meal or take them shopping just don't give them money because it's virtually guaranteed that it's going to go on their substance of choice and uh, one thing that is really important to note is if an addict is angry with you you're doing something right so how to show up in a positive way now no one is saying walk away from the addicted loved one even though some people do things get that bad Everyone's different. No one should be judged. And if we're not walking in a person's shoes, you know, we don't know how it feels to them. So that's one thing to bear in mind. But showing up in a positive way for the addicted loved one is by leading by example. Don't get drawn into their drama because that's what they want. Just be an observer. Just watch. Remain calm and be quiet and the first time you try this just see how the addict reacts my son just looked completely confused because it was the first time I'd never bit back at him answered him back or argued with him I just remained calm and quiet until he'd finished um so we'd got nothing to argue about or with to be honest now no matter what it is important really important to tell your addicted loved one that you love them that you will be there to support them and that's when they're not under the influence and when they decide they want to get well the reason it's important is they don't love themselves they've got such low self-esteem and they don't think they're you know they're worthy of love so it is important to tell them that you love them and that you will support them when they want to get well This is something that does take time to master. However, it is very important because remaining calm means that you avoid all the upset and the addict has less chance of manipulating you. And I think that's really important um, because that is one of the traits of addiction. So lead by example and your addict will start to change. It may take a while but lead by example. If you're looking after yourself and your self-care and you are not getting drawn into their arguments, you are leading by example and they will change. They'll have no, uh, no exception to, you know, they will have to change. So today's closing words of wisdom are knowledge is only power if you put your learnings into practice. Yeah, it's going to be hard at first, but the more you practice consistently, the easier it will get. And it does. I've been there. I've done it. I've had to practice lots and it did get easier. So I know it gets easier. It's just not an easy journey. Okay, so yes, the four C's, I'm sure you know them by now, are you didn't cause it. You can't control it, you can't cure it, but you do have choices. Yes, you do have choices. You can make good choices, you can make bad choices, but you have choices. Becoming aware of the positive choices that you can make for yourself and your addicted loved one is a difficult one as initially you're going to be fearful that something horrible is going to happen to them. 
And that's exactly where the addict wants you. They want you in that fearful place and that place where you'll do anything for them. And one of the most popular things you'll hear is, I owe money and I don't pa- if I don't pay it, I'm going to get seriously hurt or seriously beaten up. And of course, we don't want them to get hurt. Now, my son used to do this all the time. And I always used to give in. But the one day I said no, and I meant no. And he slammed the car door and swearing and all sorts. And yeah, not nice. But get what? guess what? I saw him the next day. Had he been beaten up? No. So bear that in mind. There have been times when he's beaten up, but it's never been when I've not given him money because he owed it. Um, so, yeah, it's just something to be aware of they will manipulate they will lie it is a trait of an addict and one of the first boundaries I set was to switch my phone off at 9 30 every night and the reason I did that was because I used to get phone calls all through the night some nights and it could be anything I'm lonely um can you come and get me for whatever reason I've run out of electricity it just the excuses yeah there was just loads so yeah I used to get phone calls all the way through the night and it wasn't until someone said to me what can you do in the middle of the night you know there's no services open there's nothing you know no medical services other than a and e um so what can you do and the thing is there's not a lot I could do during the night so then I started to think well I do need my sleep I'm one of these people I do need my sleep because otherwise I get really foggy brained I can't function and I'm just really cranky and not nice to be around so I thought yeah you know I'm gonna give this a try and I did gave it a try and initially I used to get phone calls from ambulance men that had been left at three and four in the morning um but I felt I was to cope with it because I'd had a good night's sleep. But then guess what? After a couple of weeks, didn't get any phone calls in the night anymore. And I still, to this day, turn my phone off at 9.30. It's become a habit. I've set my phone up so that it goes on to do not disturb at 9.30 at night. And it doesn't wake up until 7.30 a.m. the next morning. So, yeah. And I just feel so much or felt so much better just having good night's sleep because I'd gone years where I hadn't had a good night's sleep it was continuously broken all the time so now let's move on to what is enabling well enabling is indirectly facilitating an addict's substance abuse by helping them and I always think of it as loving someone to death because when we give them money or we pay their bills for them we're killing them with kindness we give them money we pay their bills and it's all done out of love until we realize that what we're doing could contribute to devastating consequences for example when a child is small If they do something naughty or wrong, we'll chastise them. And the reason we chastise them is because we want them to be safe and we want them to learn right from wrong. And we do it because we love them. So why is it when we know we have an addicted loved one, we start rewarding bad behaviour by enabling them? We enable them to continue in something that can be potentially life-threatening. And the reason we do it is because of the fear. And that fear comes from not knowing about addiction, not knowing the traits of addicts. So what we are doing is, you know, we think we're helping when we're not. We're just not. And we need, we do need to educate ourselves about addiction. It's key for us and for the addict if we want things to change. It's so important to remember to educate ourselves, to try and understand what we're dealing with. Let's move on to why self-care is so important. 
Well, self-care is so important when we've got an addicted loved one. Because what happens is, without even knowing it at first, we neglect ourselves. And because we become absolutely obsessed about the addict and what they're doing, every waking moment is taken up by sorts of the addicts. What are they doing? Where are they? Are they safe? Are they doing something they shouldn't be doing? This is called codependency. It's when you become addicted to your addict. And over time, that will take its toll on your mental health and sometimes your physical health. Um, we own, we're only happy when the addict's happy. And we're, you know, when they're creating drama, we become really anxious and we can't think straight. And it, it's just horrible. It's just absolute chaos. So now is the time to take a step back and do something for you. You're not being selfish. Self-care is a necessity. And even more so when you've got an addicted loved one. And that's if you, you, if you want to, you know, if you don't want to have poor mental health or even worse, a breakdown. I had a breakdown because I did, I was doing everything wrong. I wasn't reaching out because I'd isolated myself. And I just got to the point that I couldn't cope anymore. And I got up the one morning and just went to pieces. And my daughter says now, she says, you just cried for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I'm not a cry person, but I know now how it feels to have a breakdown. So I can actually um, know if I'm starting to slide down that slope and I will make sure that I step back and start looking after myself and do things, you know, that are good for me because I never, ever, ever want to go back to that place. So what I want you to do is promise to do at least one thing for yourself every week to start. And then I want you to build it up to do a little something every day. Now, I'm not thinking of something that takes you loads and loads of time. I now just do, I've got like daily habits and they take me what, about 20 minutes, half an hour. But things like breathing just conscious breathing it really helps me it helps me to stay grounded so you don't have to spend a lot of time like journaling reading there's all sorts of things just do something that you like doing yoga pilates going for a walk there's loads of stuff and yeah just be aware of how different you start to feel by taking care of yourself the only thing I will say, caveat to that, is initially you will feel guilty, but it will pass because you will start seeing the benefits or feeling the benefits of just having a little time for yourself. So today's closing words of wisdom, again, are never lose hope. Every day that your addicted loved one wakes up, there is hope that they will reach out for professional help. And also remember, you are not alone. There are between three and five million people in the same situation as you and they're suffering in silence. So reach out and you, you can't do it on your own. You do need support from people that have been there, people that are going through it, people that understand. So please remember you are not alone. The free resources for today, as I mentioned earlier, there's an enabling addiction PDF and a self-care assessment. And as I said, if you would like a free 30 minute one-to-one -one with me to discuss your self-care assessment, please contact me. So if you click on the link in the comments below, fill in your details and you will receive your free PDF of enabling addiction and your self-care assessment. And if you would like a free printable copy of these slides, please also make a note there and let me know. So there we are, everyone. We have come to the end of the four day mini course. Now, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, because I've loved delivering it. And I also hope that you've learned something from it. 
even if it's just to reach out just for a conversation and yeah I just wish you all well on your journey and take care everyone and hopefully I will see you soon so take care everyone bye